I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed today to be bringing God's truth to you. Hallelujah. Now, this is the last week of the month of November. And after this week, we are stepping into the last month of the year. Hey, how has 2024 been? Now, I was sharing with them, with, 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 with our brethren last week, Thursday, and I was telling them that the next three years are going to be very important, not only as Christians, but even for the world. 2025, 2026, and 2027. You're going to see a lot of movement from heaven within these three years. There's a lot of movement. Some of it will amaze a lot of people, and some people will be swept off. Yes, a lot of things are going to be happening. And why are they happening? Because God is winding things up. So I pray that your eyes of understanding will truly be enlightened in this season. I pray that your heart will be prepared for the move of God that is coming next. And I pray that you will be found worthy as a stone in the house that Jesus is building. That's my prayer for you. And I sincerely pray that you understand this and subject yourself as a willing vessel for the Lord's use. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready for this? Join me right now and say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, we've been talking about the spirit of boldness. That's what we've been on since the beginning of the month of November. The Spirit of God said to us, I'm releasing upon you boldness. Now, our team scripture for this month has been Acts chapter 4 and verse 29. Now, the disciples have been threatened and then they went before the Lord and made a request to God. I remember I told you something. I said, they, in verse 29, they were praying and saying, Now, Lord, behold, they are threatening and grant unto your, thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. They went before the Lord and said, Lord, grant us so that we will with all boldness speak the word. Now, before this time, in, chap in verse 13, same chapter 4, when they were they were called to questioning by the, the scribes and the Sadducees. And, and when they were called to questioning, the Bible said in verse 13 that now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, see? So now they've already started exhibiting boldness. But here they come to the Lord and they say, grant us that with all boldness. So they were not really asking for something they have not um, exhibited before. Now, why were they asking the Lord? If you're already bold, why are you going to the Lord to ask him for boldness again? Yes, because one, you need to be sure that your boldness is coming from the Lord. Okay? So they said, we are ready to speak your word, but do one thing for us. Grant us that we will stand without shame and speak your word. <laughs> How is he going to do that? They told him, by stretching forth your hands to heal. So, like what has happened now, the whole city went haywire. Why? Because a man was healed and everybody knew that man, okay? So they, they said, look, we want to be more bold, Lord. We just want to be more bold. So help us in doing this. Now, to be bold, to speak the word of God, some measure of results is required. Yes. You don't say, I'm bold by faith. I'm bold by faith. No. You've got to see some measure of results. You've got to see some things move physically. And that's the thing that will give you more boldness. Now, many of God's children believe his word, but they are quiet. They can't stand out to defend 
the word because there is lack of boldness. Why, why do they lack boldness? Because they cannot put their foot down or they cannot put their life to say this thing works. It's amazing how many of God's children can only, when we talk about the power of God, many of God's children can only relate it to um, the work of the ministry. Now, understand what I mean by the work of the ministry. Um, our pastor in church, ah, if you see, if you see the miracle that happened in church, so they talk about things that happened during church gatherings. We seldom hear of testimonies that happen in the workplace. Now, I know sometimes in church testimony time, they come, people line up and say, oh, I got a promotion in my work today. Oh, I, I, I got favor to be sent on an international trip. I, you know, we share all those kind of things. But you see, we hardly see God's children show how by faith and the demonstration of boldness, they achieved A, B, C in the workplace. Praise God. You hardly see such people. And not because they are, they are not there, but because the way Christianity is fashioned today is fashioned. Now, now, sincerely speaking, this is the reason I miss those days of full gospel businessmen's fellowship. Now, there is still full gospel business, but then it's not as, you see, um, several church setup have swallowed up the effectiveness of full gospel businessmen. Now, I'm one of those people who grew up reading the Voice magazine. Now, those, those first original Voice magazine, I, I started reading it when I was young, maybe as early as I, I, I could read, when I started reading. Those are the first magazines I began to read. And I'll see test. The beautiful thing about the Voice magazine then, I, I know they still produce it, um, I think they, they do the Nigerian version now, but it's been a while I saw it. Now, maybe then, because my, my, my dad was a chapter president, so all those materials will always come. Okay, so now you read a testimony of a pilot, how he received Jesus Christ and how Jesus have been effective or made him more effective in flying planes. Now, not just telling you, Ah, since I got born again, Jesus, because, no, they share clear, literal testimonies. How they were about to board the flight and, and, and they had the, the Lord say to them, check this, check that. And then they went and like, hey, um, have you checked? They said, no, it's okay, it's okay. And they're like, no, the Lord is saying, check this. And then, come on, come, come, come check it again. I've already checked it. And look, I've ticked it. Everything is okay. No, just come check it again. And then they go together and they check. And then they see there's a problem. Whoa, whoa. This would have crashed this flight. How did you know? The Lord spoke to me about it. And that's a testimony. <laughs> that's not saying I, I went for a meeting and while the preacher was preaching, I had be healed. Ah, uh, no. Nah. Now those there were, there were testimonies of healings. There were test and, and the beautiful thing about about the Voice magazine then is that it was sharing the lives of normal people, not pastors. What they are doing in the crusade ground, not no the people who are doing this in their work workspace. The people who's doing this in a, a lady that's that's demonstrating faith in her candy shop. <laughs> it's good. and 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 it's working. That was the kind of background I I grew up in. And that's why I'm not so, um, well, I mean, if, if we don't bring this thing back into the streets, if we don't bring this thing back into the marketplace, because it seems like we only showcase it in that church setting. The problem is, as though only the pastor is manifesting boldness. So we all support the pastor to hold a crusade. And during the crusade, miracles take place. And we all rejoice in the fact that God is still working in our day. But what about your life? And, and, and next, 
please, please understand what I'm sharing with you. Next, you find out you're a member of a church and they hold a monthly crusade or monthly healing program and somebody is sick in your family. And then you're like, oh, let's, let's, let's be patient. Month end, we'll take the person for that healing crusade or healing uh, miracle program. And let's believe that God will heal that person. I don't think that is right. It is not right. It, it shows that you, as a member of that church, you still don't understand what God is doing. That's what it shows. If you have to wait until the next miracle service before you put this thing before the Lord, you're living like in the Old Testament. I have to, I, I shared with you why the reason um, Hannah delayed so much before she got gave back to Samuel was because her prayer was done once a year. It's only when they go to Shiloh. So they went, imagine if they go to Shiloh every December. See, now she, she goes this year and, and she was not ready. She was not ready to, to settle down and receive the mind of God concerning her miracle. And then they leave Shiloh. Now that, that year is gone. So you have to wait until next year, Shiloh. And then you now come again and say, Father, I bring this matter before you again. Because they felt, because the ark of God was in Shiloh, that's where the presence of God is. So that's where you can only really pray and be heard. Can you see that? Now imagine that happening once a year. And if you miss it every year, think about it. See? So, but, so it's the same thing. Someone said, oh, we do healing programs once a month. And then you have to wait for that healing program so that the person that is sick in your house can be taken there to be healed. If you are really learning or if you understand what God is doing, you should know that if God can heal people then during the healing meeting, then he can heal now in my house. You see, you remember when Jesus went to meet that man by the pool of Bethsaida and, and he said to the man, do you want to be well? The man said, yeah, well, it's just that I don't have anybody to throw me in. When the water is stirred, nobody's there. Someone jumps in before me. Jesus just said to him, do you want to be healed? And then he said to him, get up, take up your bed and go home. Now, Jesus didn't say, okay, you know what? Um, I'm going to come and help you. The next time the angel is going to come. So I'll be here. When the angel comes to stir up the water, I'll push you in first. And then you'll be here. Jesus didn't do that. What did Jesus say? Get up. He, hey, come hey, hey, Jesus didn't say, okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm going to call the angel now to stir the water right now. No. The water wasn't stirred. Okay. No angel came, yet the man got healed. <laughs> got, the man got healed. Do you understand what God is doing? Whatever you see happening in your church should be happening in your home. Whatever you see the anointing of God, what, whatever anointing you see your pastor operating that you believe in, you should be functioning in it, in it at home. All you need to do is to copy and paste. And just like that, yes. Copy it, paste it in your home. You see your pastor pray for this. He can say, be healed in Jesus' name. Okay, there's a sick person in your house. You go to that person and say, listen, I'm going to pray for you now. Be healed in Jesus' name. And a miracle will happen. Ah, Pastor Joe, it's not like that. You don't know how many hours my pastor prays before he comes for that meeting. I'm telling you the truth. He's done the prayer. You do the work. If not, then it's all a show. Now, I don't mean, I don't, I'm not saying this to mean you don't need to pray personally, but please understand. Sometimes we put so much emphasis in the wrong places. Does God need me to pray so hard before he will heal someone through me? No, sir. No. Jesus and his son shall follow them that believe. And when, hey, come on, I, I was sharing that with you last week. And he was referring to you as a preacher. When you go pray, when you go minister to people and they, they, they claim they are now born again, they claim they have believed in Jesus Christ. Okay. And 
and you you maybe lead them to Christ just like we do today because you finish praying. He said, do you believe that Jesus is Lord? He said, yeah, I think I believe now. So are you ready to give your heart to Christ? Oh yeah, I'm ready to give my heart to Christ. Now the truth is, if you've been on the field, you know that it's not everybody that said they want to. Sometimes people just do it. Oh, just let's pray so that you can leave me alone. You see, most times it's just a few that really carry on with their faith. Just like you go for a crusade and they make the altar call. Hundreds of people come out for the altar call. But then watch two years later, how many people can still trace their life change from that altar call. It will tell you the difference. Okay. So, um, but then you don't now say because <laughs> you, you don't say um, it's only in that church environment that things happen. There are people who got saved without being in a church. There are people who didn't even hear anybody preach to them. They just had an encounter with God. Yes, they did. And they truly got saved. And their lives are changed. They, they, they keep moving on with that and, and glorifying God. Praise God. So now, whatever happens in the church, whatever you see your pastor do, God replicates the same thing. So like I was saying, Jesus told us that when you go preaching and, and, and then you, 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 you pray for them, they say they believed, Jesus now said, this is how you, the preacher, will know those that have truly believed. And what is it? He said, in my name, they will cast out devils. So you see your pastor cast out devils during the program. And the devils are getting out. And then you, you like, wow, pastor is so anointed. Ah! <laughs> And then someone now whisper, hmm, before each of those programs, pastor used to lock himself for three days dry fasting before he comes out. Ah, no wonder the power of God is so massive in that place. The demons didn't need you. Or Jesus doesn't need you to fast and pray like that before you cast out demons. Now, why, why is the pastor spending that good quality time in prayer before coming out for a program i'll tell you the reason now he is coming out from a true pastor a true minister he is he's spending that time with the lord because now he's invited people to come see the work of god come see the power of god okay now he needs to spend time in the presence of god to say lord i, I just want to minister what's on your mind i, I just want to say what you would have said I just want to do what you would have done. See, so all that preparation he puts in because he's done an advertisement to say, come and see the power of God. So he needs to make himself ready so that he will be completely influenced by the spirit of God. This is why they do that. Okay. I'm telling you this now. Now, you on your own, you don't necessarily in your day to day life, if not, you'll be on a fast, complete fast every day of your life. <laughs> God. Yeah, because you walk into the office and, and someone is complaining, my back is aching me, I can't sit up. What do you do? And I say, ah, we need to have a healing program for you. Okay, give me three days to fast and pray. Oh, people will die if they have to wait for you like that. So what do you do in that case? You just step into the office and, and someone is saying, ah, 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 what's the matter? Why are you acting that way? I don't know what happened this morning. I woke up and I'm feeling so much pains. Ah, now that's an opportunity for you. What do you do? Say, okay, don't, don't even start saying, mm, have you taken painkillers? Have you done this? Have you done that? No, that's not where you should start from. You're seeing this discomfort. The first thing that should come to your mind, hey, can I pray for you? Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Then you look at the person and you say, Jesus said, if I lay my hands on you, you will be healed. So I'm going to lay my hands. Now, why do you say that? Now, this is what they were asking from the Lord. Grant us that with all boldness, we may what? Speak thy word. So you look at this fellow. You don't just say, eh, 
Let me pray for you. Oh, Father, please heal him in Jesus' name. No, speak with courage. Say, can I pray for you? I said, oh, okay, okay. Now you look at the person and said, listen, Jesus said to me that if I lay hands on you, you will recover. So I'm going to lay my hands on you now and a recovery is going to take place. Ah, hey, but that's what if he lay hands on nothing? I will see your problem. You don't believe Jesus. That's your problem. But now, you have asked God, Lord, grant me boldness. With all boldness, I will speak your word. Then start acting it. And go, so I'm going to lay my hands on you now. And God is going to heal you. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Uh, all right. Then you put your hand there in the name of Jesus. You'll be amazed. Hallelujah. You'll be amazed. And, 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 and I'll tell you the truth. No, sometimes it's not the sometimes the way it happens looks so simple even when you start doubting was this person really in pain or you st- there are times you will be wondering like is, is everybody trying to set me up for something or what because like, like ah, the pain is gone no? ah this person will be telling other people ah do you know I came to work with pain ah, this, ah, this is a pastor uh, mi- uh, Mr. Sox is a pastor so why is he saying that I came to work today do you know he prayed for me and the thing left you start like, hey, no, 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 no. Hey! Boldness. And that's what Jesus wants us to begin to do. Don't see a problem and shy away from it. Don't see a problem and run away from it. Do something in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Our time is up today. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.